Now, this lecture is part of an online course on group theory and will be mostly about the groups of order 24. Um, now, there are 15 of these and what we're going to do is just quickly look through all of them and pick out the, a couple of the most interesting ones and look at those in more detail. So let's first of all see how to classify them. Um, first of all, um, there's a seal of three subgroup. And there are two cases. There might be one seal of three subgroup, which is normal. Or there might be four, because the number of seal of three subgroups is one mod three and divides 24. So that's the only possibility. And these are not normal. So let's first look at the case when the seal of three subgroups are normal. So that means the group G would have the seal of three subgroup as a normal subgroup and would be a direct product with a group of order eight, which would be the seal of two subgroup. And um, there are five possibilities for this. So this group can be Z modulo 8Z, Z modulo 4Z times Z modulo 2Z, Z modulo 2Z cubed. It could be the quaternion group or it could be the dihedral group. And we have to figure out what is the action of this group of order 8 on this group of order 3. Well, this group of order 3 has an automorphism group of order two. So we're just looking at homomorphisms from these groups to a group of order two. And there's one obvious possibility. So um, the automorphism could be trivial. So, sorry, not the automorphism. The action on Z modulo 3Z could be trivial or non-trivial. And if it's trivial, the groups is then G is just a product of these two groups, so we get five cases. If the action is non-trivial, we have to count how many essentially different ways this group can map to a group of order two, and the answer is there's one way, two ways, one way, one way, and two ways. So the these two groups can act in two ways on a group of or on a group of order three, and they can be distinguished by the fact that the kernel of the map from this to Z2 can be either a cyclic group of order four or a cyclic group of order two times a cyclic group of order two. And I'm not going to go through these in detail, you can leave it as an exercise for the listener or something. Um, the only one really worth commenting on is this one here, which turns out to be the binary dihedral group of order 24. So it's a sort of double cover of the dihedral group of order 12. Um, other than that, I can't really think of anything much to say about these groups. So that's done the cases when the seal of subgroup is normal and it gives us altogether 12 groups. And we're now going to do the three cases when the seal of subgroup is not normal. So altogether, we're going to see 15 groups. So now let's look at the case when the seal of three subgroup is not normal. So there are four seal of three subgroups. And now G acts by conjugation on these four groups. On the four seal of three subgroups. So we just remember the action by conjugation means an element G acting on a seal of subgroup S is just G S G to the minus one. Um, and it acts transitively on these. So we get a homomorphism from G to the group S4. So this is the symmetric group of all permutations of the four seal of three subgroups. Um, and this is on, so, sorry, it's not on to necessarily. Um, we can look at the kernel 
So what is the kernel? Well, the kernel, um, so the, the kernel must have ordered dividing six because we've got a transitive action of G on a set of four elements and G is 24 elements. So the kernel is order one, two, three, or six. Well, it can't have order three or six because if the kernel was had order three or six, um, an order three subgroup of the kernel would be normal in um, G. Um, as you can easily see, a group of order six has a has a subgroup of order three that would be fixed under all automorphisms of this group of order six, so it'd have to be a normal subgroup of G. So the kernel has order one or two, and both of these cases can occur. Um, first of all, the case when the kernel of, is order one is rather easy, because if the kernel is order one, then we've got a map from a group of order 24 to a group of order 24 with trivial kernel, so this implies G must actually be equal to the symmetric group. Um, if the kernel is order two, we've got to think about it a little bit more. So if the kernel is order two, the image has order 12, and the image has more than one seal of three subgroup, because otherwise G would have a normal seal of three subgroup. Um, so is isomorphic to A4, because if we look at all groups of order 12, A4 is the only group with more than one seal of three subgroup. Um, now, A4 has a normal subgroup of order two, and its inverse image in G will be a normal subgroup of order eight. So in this case, G has a normal subgroup of order um, eight. And this means, um, carrying on with the orange case, so G is a semi-direct product of um, an order eight group with a group of order three acting non-trivially because if it acted trivially, then we would be back in the case when it had a normal S3, seal of three subgroup. And we can check through the groups of order eight and we find there are just two possibilities. Um, it could either be Z modulo two Z cubed, semi-direct product Z modulo three Z, or it could be the quaternion group of order eight, semi-direct product Z modulo three Z. And this case, um, you can check, just gives us A4 cross Z modulo 2Z. And this case gives us one of the more interesting groups. It's called the binary tetrahedral group. Um, so um, you see that we have found three ways to join the groups A4 and Z modulo 2Z. So we found these three groups with, without, of order 24 without a normal seal of two subgroup. And I want to sort of try and draw pictures of them. So I'm going to draw an A4 sitting on top of the Z modulo 2Z. So this is going to be the binary tetrahedral group. And what happens is it has a center of order two and the quotient by the center is the tetrahedral group or alternating group A4. On the other hand we could have the group A4 with the group of order two sitting on top of it. So this is the symmetric group S4 which has A4 as a subgroup and the quotient is a group of order two. And finally we can just have the product A4 times Z modulo 2Z, which doesn't really have either of these groups sitting on top of the other. They're just sort of sitting next to each other in a sort of equal fashion. And this is a product of two groups. 
Um, and this similar thing happens for alternating groups A n for n greater than uh, for, for other values of n. You usually find there are three ways to join them um, together. Um, except sometimes uh, when we discuss the alternating group A6, we'll sometimes find there's occasionally more than uh, there are some extra things you can do. But but all all the, the alternating groups A n all have three ways of stick gluing them together with a group of order two. You can either put a group of two on order top or on the bottom or by the side of the A4. Um, so now we're going to look at the binary tetrahedral group a little bit. So we recall that we had the group S3 of unit quaternions Um, mapping to SO3 of R, which is all rotations of three-dimensional space. And inside the group of rotations, we have the group A4 of unit quaternions, sorry, not of unit quaternions, of rotations of a tetrahedron. And the binary tetrahedral group, which is, you can denote it by A4 with a little hat on top, um, maps onto this group and has a center of order two. So this is an example of a central extension of the group A4. Central extension just means a group mapping onto A4 with the kernel being in the center. Central extensions turn up quite a lot in mathematics and they're usually rather, rather difficult to see. Um, so um, we can actually write down the binary tetrahedral group explicitly. Suppose we take all integer quaternions. So we take plus or minus a plus or minus b i plus or minus. What am I doing these plus or minuses for? Sorry, I'm getting confused. It's a plus b i plus c j plus d k for a b c d integers. So this is one obvious guess for what the integer quaternions are, but it's not actually a terribly good guess. Um, Hurwitz found a, a slightly bigger ring of integral quaternions where you take either A, B, C, D in the integers or A, B, C, D are all in the integers plus a half. So for example, a half plus a half I plus a half J plus a half K is also um, one of these um, integer quaternions. And you can check these are closed under multiplication. And now we can look for the units in these integral quaternions. And these units are just the quaternions with z times z bar equals one. In other words, a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared equals one. So we can write down the integral Hurwitz quaternions. Let's write down Hurwitz quaternions. So the integral Hurwitz quaternions are the following. We have plus or minus one, plus or minus i, plus or minus j, plus or minus k. So these are the obvious ones. These just form the quaternion group of order eight. But then we've got 16 more because we have plus or minus one, plus or minus i, plus or minus j, plus or minus k, all over two. So we get eight here. And another 16 here. And these form the binary tetrahedral group. Um, so we'll just finish off this lecture on groups of order 24 by saying a bit more about the symmetric group S4. Um, what we can do is look for its normal subgroups It doesn't actually have all that many. It's got um, a normal subgroup z over 2z times z over 2z, and it's got a normal subgroup a4, and this is containing s4. So you remember a4 is just the group of permutations that fix um, x, w minus x, w minus y, w minus z times x minus y, x minus z y minus c. And 
The group Z2 times Z2 is a normal subgroup of A4 and consists of the three permutations 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 4, 2, 3, together with the identity permutation. Um, so S4 is the first group with no normal Stilov subgroups. If you look, every group we've had so far, apart from S4, always has a normal Seelov subgroup for some prime, but um, here we're starting to get more complicated groups that don't, that, that, that you can't construct like that. Um, however, S4 is still an example of a solvable group. So group G is called solvable if we can find a series of subgroups, one contained in G0, so one equals G0, which is contained in G1, contained in G2, contained in Gn equals G, so that Gi is normal in Gi plus one, and the quotient Gi plus one over Gi is cyclic, of prime order. Actually, we could just let this be abelian because you can break any abelian group up into um, extensions of cyclic groups of prime order. So uh, roughly speaking, a group is called solvable if you can sort of build it out of cyclic groups of prime order, which are the easiest sort of groups. And we can see that all nil potent groups are solvable. It's easy to check because a by induction because a nil potent group has a center so you can start off here so all groups we've seen so far are solvable and the only one that's a little bit tricky to do is s4 but we see that s4 is this chain of subgroups um, and we can break this one up into two copies of z2 so we can get a chain like this um, in fact the first the smallest group that isn't solvable is a5 which we will get to a bit later Um, that the reason why groups are called solvable comes from Galois theory, where um, if you've got a polynomial, you can form a Galois group, which is some sort of permutation of the set of all the roots of the polynomial. And if the Galois group is solvable, then you can solve the equation by radicals. You can write down an explicit formula for the roots only using the usual field operations together with taking roots. And the fact that S4 is solvable corresponds to the fact that any polynomial of degree at most four, you can write down an explicit solution by radicals. However, the fact that A5 is not solvable corresponds to the fact that some polynomials of degree five cannot be solved by radicals. Um, um, it's actually, as I said, A5 is a little bit odd in that it as has this normal subgroup. Most, most other alternating groups don't have this normal subgroup here. Um, the quotient of S4 by this normal subgroup here gives a map from S4 to S3. Um, so we ha actually have a homomorphism from S4 to S3, which is unusual. Usually a symmetric group Sn has no homomorphism to Sn minus 1. Um, you can see this as follows. Suppose we take four points. So here, so suppose these are the four points acted on by S4. Then we can construct a, a set of three things acted on by S3. And the three things are always adjoining these points up in two pairs. So if I take these four points, um, I can join them up in pairs. Um, like this, or like this, or like this. So we have a set of three um, objects, which are ways of joining up four points in pairs. And any permutation of these four points is going to give a permutation of these three objects. So, so any, any permutation of four points will give us a permutation of three objects. So this gives us the homomorphism from S4 to S3. Um, well, there's quite a lot more to say about S4, but I think 
it would be better to have a general discussion about symmetric groups rather than just S4. So the next lecture will be on symmetric groups.